Hello everybody. Uh, I want to welcome you all to lecture 3 of our video lecture series on response spectrum analysis. If you remember in our first lecture of this video lecture series, we discussed on the basic concept of dynamic analysis and response spectrum analysis. In our second lecture, we looked at the codal provisions regarding dynamic analysis and that was based on IS 1893 part 1 2016 code and that was the code for criteria for earthquake resistant design of structures general provisions and in this third lecture today we are going to look at some aspects related to model analysis we touched upon this model analysis and what are mode shapes or what are the checks that we have to perform regarding the modes of vibration in our building in our video lecture of uh, seismic resistant rcc residential building design and you can go to our youtube channel and you can search for our lecture named post analysis checks in etaps in that video lecture series and if you watch that lecture again then you can see some aspects related to the model analysis in that video also in today's lecture we will be dealing with model analysis because model analysis is the basis for performing response spectrum analysis. So if you look at my screen, you can see I have modeled a four story building. Somewhat it is a three and a half story or you can call it a four story also because our upper story, we only have a staircase cover. So basically it is a three story building that I have modeled here. and I have already defined all the necessary things including materials, members, load cases, load pattern, load combination, diaphragm, mass source and everything I have already defined in this building. And we will now in, in the remaining lectures of this video lecture series we will work with the same model and if necessary I will also be providing you this model so that you can practice on your own using this model. And we will be looking at the concept of model analysis based on this new model. So before starting model analysis, let's go to our option define and mass source. You can see here that our mass source named mass source here, it is defined already. First, let me cancel this. I have run analysis once and now the model is locked. I want to unlock it before proceeding further. Let's unlock it. So our model has been unlocked. Now let's go to define and mass source. And let's click on modify so mass source. You can see here that our mass source is defined uh, in the same way that we learned during our previous videos. Our mass source consists of additional mass and specified load patterns. I have not selected element self mass here, but rather defined dead load pattern here in this table. You either have to check element self mass here and then not define dead load here, or you can uncheck here and then define dead load pattern here. If you both, if you do the both, that is uh, check this element self mass and also define dead load pattern here, then our dead load will be counted twice and that will give uneconomical results. So I haven't checked element self mass. I have defined dead load pattern here and I have included all other load patterns that will participate in the mass source or that will make up the mass source. And based on our code, our dead loads here, for example, dead masonry, partition and floor finish all have a multiplier of one. But our live load, our live load in residential building is two kilonewton per meter square. So for two kilonewton per meter square, only 25% of live load is taken for mass source. So multiplier is used 0.25. So in this way, I have defined mass source here. Let's just cancel it and then cancel again. Now let's go to modal analysis. So what is modal analysis? Modal analysis is used to determine the vibration modes of a structure. We discussed upon the vibration modes also. What are the vibration modes? Vibration modes means the deflected shape of a structure. 
it refers to the configuration or it refers to the pattern into which our structure deflects in response to earthquake shaking or in response to ground motion and we also know that each vibration mode of our structure is associated with a particular time period or particular frequency of vibration so these vibration modes are useful to understand the behavior of our structure and these vibration modes are also used as the basis for modal superposition in response spectrum and modal time history load cases so we are learning model analysis here because this model analysis, analysis forms the basis for our response spectrum analysis because what is performed in response spectrum analysis is that the different responses of different vibration modes are combined or they are superposed by using particular combination rule to determine the response of our structure in response spectrum analysis so model analysis forms the basis for response spectrum analysis so for model analysis we have to define modal load cases we know that we have different options here in under define menu we can define load pattern load cases load combinations so in our uh, introductory lectures we saw the difference between load patterns and load cases just defining load patterns will not apply that load on our structure to apply a particular load pattern on our structure each load pattern or that load pattern must be associated with a load case so similar to other load cases we will define modal cases for modal analysis so let's see here under define menu we have here modal cases i will click on this modal cases at present uh, what i did was i deleted my modal load case so i could show you from the beginning how to define a modal load case so it is blank here there are no modal cases defined so we will just go to add new case and let me name our modal case name as only model 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 so remember that uh, when in this uh, whatever in this lecture whatever we are going to discuss some concept may be complex to you because uh, we saw some basics related to response spectrum analysis and we also looked at some concepts that are used in the response spectrum analysis also i tried to give you some information or give you some concepts regarding uh, different topics but that may not be sufficient or uh, definitely it is not sufficient to understand every single thing that we will be doing in this model because uh, uh, we are not what we are not doing in this lecture series is that we are not uh, going into a topic very deeply we are just looking at some concepts that are necessary to design and analyze our building in this software and i am just i am trying my best to give concepts related to those topics that are used here so even if some topic seems incomprehensible or even if some things do not click in your mind you can go through those topics in your uh, free time or in later time what whenever it is possible and i will just try to uh, make you understand or make you clear as much as possible i will try my best for that so even if you get confused do not worry just go along with this video so i renamed my model case name model here and model case subtype if you click here model case subtype there are two options eigen and reads so what this means is that there are two methods to perform the modal analysis one is the eigen vector analysis and another is reeds vector analysis so there is a there are some differences between these two types of analysis eigen vector analysis is the traditional modal analysis so we learn about we also learn about this eigen vector solution or uh, eigen vector and yes eigen vector solution in our structural dynamics course also so eigen vector analysis is the traditional model analysis essentially what is done in eigen vector analysis is that the modes are based on computing a stiffness and mass matrices so 
first the software calculates or computes the mass matrix and stiffness matrix of our building and based on those stiffness and mass matrices the modes are computed and after the computation of those matrices the equations or that eigenvalue equations are solved for finding the fundamental frequencies associated with each mode so load combinations and load cases do not have any effect on the eigenvector fundamental modes they are solely dependent on the mass and stiffness of the structure so the mode shapes that we derive from eigenvector analysis is an inherent property of our building that depends on the mass and stiffness of our building and they are not dependent on any load combination or load cases acting on our building so eigenvector modes are also known as the fundamental modes of vibration and these are dependent only on the structure and its properties not on the external loads and in contrast this ritz vector analysis it starts from the load vectors that is given to your building load vector means that may be your dead load your seismic loading or any other non linear degrees of freedom in ritz vector analysis all of these load vectors are used to determine the approximate fundamental modes of vibration so as your starting load vectors are based on your loading the loading distribution will have an effect on your ritz vectors so from this discussion what what is the conclusion the basic difference between eigen and ritz value or ritz vector analysis is that eigen vector analysis is not dependent on the loading distribution on our building or on our structure whereas ritz analysis is based on the loading distribution on our structure so in most cases the csi software or csi recommends the use of ritz vector for the analysis so we will also select here ritz and our mass source is our the our default mass source is mass source which we defined earlier which we saw earlier and our analysis model will be default so we named our model case we chose the solution method for our model case our model case soft type we selected a ritz vector analysis we selected our mass source if there were more than one mass source in our model modeling here then you have option to select the mass source which is used for this model analysis but since here we only have one mass source that is given is the default mass source and our analysis model is default so you p delta non linear stiffness use preset p delta settings we have three options here if you click on modify or so we have three automation method for preset p delta options we can either ignore this altogether we can select non or we can use non iterative based on mass or iterative based on loads at present i have selected non iterative based on mass or the software has selected non iterative based on mass and we will just leave as it is and click on okay now what actually p delta is is that it is a method to account for the geometric non linearity in our building or in our structure let me discuss a little about this p, p delta suppose we have a cantilever column here or we have any cantilever structure let's just say this is a cantilever structure with certain mass attached at the top now if we have a vertical load p which is coming onto this cantilever structure and if we have a horizontal load y that is coming onto this structure we can say that because of this horizontal force y this horizontal force is most probably any lateral earthquake force because of this horizontal force y this structure deflects in this direction so what is considerable here is that if the deflection due to this horizontal force y is very small then this mass that is attached to the end of this cantilever structure this just moves horizontally 
the top of this mass moves just horizontally if we consider very small displacements in this case then the moment that will come at the bottom of this building or the reaction moment that will come at the base of the building this moment the value of this moment will be equal to the value of this horizontal force h multiplied by the height of this structure if we call this height of the structure is small h then h into small h so let me draw a diagram here moment will be zero at the top if i draw a bending moment diagram moment will be zero at the top and at the base the value of this moment is capital h into small h so this is the case for small displacements however if we consider if we consider an approximate scenario in which the displacement is delta r let's say that uh, let's not say that the previous case was a case for small displacement let's just say that the first case which we just discussed the first case is a case in which we do not consider the effect of non linearity in this structure and now second case if we consider the the case of non linearity in this structure then what happens is that there occurs a small displacement delta of this mass at the top of this cantilever structure due to this horizontal force h and as a result what happens is that this p and delta p means the horizontal force or the axial force acting on this cantilever structure and delta is the small displacement in the horizontal direction due to this lateral force h so if we there is a small displacement in our structure due to non linearity then additional moment will be generated at the base of our structure also and that additional moment will be besides this h into h we will have a additional moment of p into delta so if we show this p delta in our bending moment diagram then we can show in this way there is an additional moment p delta that is added to our structure due to this non linearity or due to this small displacement this effect is known as the p delta effect in our structure so p delta effect is our cause of or p delta effect causes geometric non linearity in our structure and we can use one of the three ways or we can use mainly we can use one of the two ways to incorporate this non linear stiffness in our structure one was iterative based on loads and non iterative based on mass at present i just selected non iterative based on mass and i leave it as it is so loads applied uh, we have a table below here loads applied i do not want to Uh, edit or i do not want to do anything to this table for now let's just go to the bottom and there are other parameters there are maximum number of modes and then there is minimum number of modes so what is this maximum number of modes and minimum number of modes we know that the modes of vibration in our structure or the modes of vibration in our building is associated with the degrees of freedom available in our building uh what i'm thinking uh, to do is i want to have a separate video lecture on this modes of vibration in a building probably only one lecture in the future so that uh, i want to discuss so that i can discuss some concepts related with modes of vibration with you also for now let's just look here there are some parameters maximum number of modes and minimum number of modes i talked about that the modes of vibration in our building is associated with the number of degrees of freedom available in our building let's just look fast here if what happens is suppose if we have the same cantilever structure here and if we have a fixed joint here or a restrained joint here then 
this joint can neither translate in any direction nor it can rotate about any axis what happens is that the any movement rotation or translation in this joint is completely prohibited in that case what we say is that the degree of freedom of this point or this joint is zero however if it was a hinge joint instead of a fixed joint then now this joint is not allowed to translate in either horizontal or vertical direction but this joint can now rotate about any axis any particular axis so if we consider this as a 2d diagram or as a two dimensional figure then we can say that this joint possesses or this joint has one degree of freedom since movement is possible at this joint in only one particular direction that is only one rotation is possible here so we call we tell that this joint has one degree of freedom that is the concept of degree of freedom and the num number of degrees of freedom in our building determines the number of modes of vibration so we have to give this parameter to our structure or to our model here what is the maximum number of modes that you want the analysis model to calculate and what is the minimum number of modes that you want this anal analysis model to calculate so the program will not calculate more than the specified maximum number of modes and the program will not calculate fewer than the specified minimum number of modes so generally uh, what our codal provision tells us is that and we also have discussed this codal provision in our previous lecture we have clause 7.7.5.2 in our IS1893 part 1 2016 and that clause 7.7.5.2 discusses about the number of modes to be considered what that clause says is that the number of modes to be used in the analysis for earthquake shaking along a considered direction should be such that the sum total of modal masses of these modes considered is at least 90 percent of the total seismic mass that means suppose that we have considered here 12 number of modes then in our analysis results what these 12 number of modes should do is that the total modal masses in these 12 number of modes should be at least the 90 percent of the total seismic mass if the total seismic if the total modal masses for these 12 number of modes is less than 90 percent is then you have to unlock the model come to this option again and then you have to increase the number of modes at present i will leave the default value to 12 as it is and i won't change the value because since we have a three storied structure here and considering rigid diaphragms our each floor level will have three degrees of freedom two translation and one rotation so our three floors will have three into three that means nine degrees of freedom so nine modes of vibration we will have nine modes of vibration so maximum number of modes 12 is greater than nine so i will leave this as it is so maximum number of modes 12 and minimum number of modes one if our codal provision is not satisfied we can always come back to this option and increase the number of modes so now you can click on ok here before clicking on clicking on ok let's see what would have happened if we had selected the model case subtype is eigen vector analysis let me select eigen here our p delta settings remains the same and you can see that certain options are added under this heading other parameters here there is frequency shift center cutoff frequency radius convergence tolerance three more options are added in eigenvector analysis options so what these options does is that there is a concept here called frequency shift and there is an uh, one is the shift let's just say that the two uh, two new concepts that arises due to this eigenvector analysis is the shift and cut or shift and cutoff frequency so what these options does is that if you want to specify a restricted frequency range in which you want to seek the vibration modes then you can use this option shift and cut 
let's say that we know that suppose uh, we have different modes of vibration 1 2 3 4 5 6 we have different modes of vibration in our building and each of our vibration modes are associated with a particular frequency or particular time period for example our first mode of vibration may have a time period of 0 0.54 our second mode may have a time period of 0 0.49 third mode 0 0.46 fourth mode 0 0.28 like this and each mode of vibration in our building is associated with a particular time period or a particular natural frequency so if we do not specify anything here if we leave the option of frequency shift center at zero and cutoff frequency radius at zero there won't be any restricted frequency range and the analysis results will give us all the natural modes of vibration of our building and each of those vibration modes will be associated with its own natural time period it will display the results for all the modes suppose we have said that we want results for our maximum number of modes of vibration is 12 then our analysis result will specify or will give us the natural time period and will give us the results of this all 12 vibration modes however if we want to specify a certain restricted frequency range then we can enter the value of shift here you can specify let's just see this about shift and cutoff in a number line suppose that this is a number line of natural frequency then the center of this number line or the center of our frequency range is called shift this is called shift and this shift value may be any suppose the value of this shift is our 30 hours and then cut means shift means the center of our frequency range and cut means the radius of our frequency range so radius may be in both directions either positive or negative we call this radius as cut or cut for example this may be up to 40 hours and this may be up to 20 hours so what happens is that by specifying the value of our frequency shift and our cutoff frequency we have restricted our possible frequency range of our modes of vibration to this range only this is our restricted frequency range and if there are modes of vibration lying outside this range either to the left or out there to the right the software does not give us results for this vibration modes lying outside this restricted frequency range so this is the importance of specifying the shift frequency and cutoff frequency and this uh, option is generally important to us when there are some vibrating when there are some vibrating machines attached to our building and the and we have to make sure that the vibration or the frequency of that vibrating machine does not match with the frequency of our building in that case we may need to specify the cutoff frequency and the frequency shift at present we do not need these two values so they are just left to be zero and zero so if we uh, if we just write here zero then zero for this both frequency shift and cutoff frequency then there will be no restricted frequency range for our analysis model so convergence tolerance i will keep it as it is and allow auto frequency shifting i have checked this model you can perform two model analysis by using both this eigen and reeds vector analysis and you can check the results also and you can compare the results of these two analysis methods for the present i will just select this reeds analysis again and then i will click on ok no load assignments are specified do you really want to close the form uh, no okay let's just not uh, go through its analysis let us just go through the 
traditional model analysis that is the eigenvalue model analysis here and for eigenvalue model analysis you do not have to apply any loads only advanced load data does not exist so uh, we should not or we need not go through that form that is a little bit more complex so let's not go to that let's just stick with the traditional method of uh, eigen vector analysis and then uh, other parameters are okay let's just click on okay so we have defined our modal load case let's click on okay now let us run the modal load case and see the results for that go to analyze and go to set load cases to run at present we only want our modal load case analysis to run so other all load cases are set to do not run only modal load case is set to run here if you want to change this you can just if you select this modal load case and click on run do not run case it changes to do not run and if you click here again it just changes to run so i just want to run the modal load case i have selected i, I have make this as run and other are set as do not run then i will click as run now so it will take some time for our analysis model to generate the modal information or the results that are derived from the modal analysis so let's see here if you look at our 3d diagram here we have got a deflected shape due to this modal load case now there are some checks to be performed for or after running the modal analysis because modal analysis tells us how healthy our structure is or how well proportioned our structure is if there is any uh, disproportionate or if there is any uh, if there is any how do i put this if the our building shows any uncommon behavior then model analysis uh, shows the result of that uncommon behavior and then we can make correction to our model by itself or through this model analysis also so let's uh, check some results obtained from this model analysis case if you see here at the top you see that what it says 3d view mode shape mode 1 and the period is 0.639 second so this is the deflected shape for our first mode of vibration let us look at results for some more modes of vibration for that you can either go to display and show tables or you can just go to this modal explorer on the left hand side of your user interface go to tables here we want the tables for analysis results expand this analysis results form structure output we want modal information and if you see here we have various results for modal information we can only see modal periods and frequencies or modal participating mass ratios modal load participation factors modal participation factors and modal direction factors at first let's look at modal periods and frequencies so just right click on this and show table let's see here first let's see that we have the modal results for 12 mode cases or 12 modes of vibration here why 12 because we set the maximum number of modes allowed to 12 in our modal analysis load case so it gives us results for our 12 modes here and each mode of vibration is associated with a particular time period or particular frequency so you can see that this is the result of our modal analysis and each mode of vibration is associated with a particular time period particular frequency particular circular frequency and particular eigenvalue also so these four are the results of our modal analysis load or modal analysis see here that the time periods of first three modes of vibration are closely spaced 0 0.639 0 0.585 0 0.467 as we go to higher modes of vibration the time period is decreasing whereas the frequency of vibration is increasing 
so the first three modes have closely spaced time periods and then there is a sudden decrease in the a sudden large decrease in the time period from the fourth mode of vibration 0 0.204 and similar is the case for frequency also so this is about modal periods and frequencies let's just sit down now let's go to the table for modal participating mass ratios one of the important checks of modal analysis i have also discussed about this table in detail in our uh, video lecture series of uh, seismic resistant rcc design as i said in the beginning there is one video in that lecture series named post analysis checks and in that video i discuss about the some checks that you have to perform on the model after doing the analysis of the building in etaps there also i have discussed on this model participating mass ratios i also want to discuss this again in this video so again we have the results for 12 modes of vibration here these are time periods and now here ux ui uz these are the these value give us the modal participating mass ratios in these three directions ux means the mass ratio the modal participating mass ratio in the global x direction ui in the global y direction and uz in the global z direction similarly this sum ux sum ui and sum uz gives us the cumulative values of this ux ui and uz respectively and rx ry rz rx is the modal participating mass ratios about the global x direction now this is rotational ux and ui and uz were in the global x y and z direction and rx ry rz are modal participating mass ratios about the global x y and z direction respectively so ux ui and uz are related to translational modes and rx ry and rz are related to rotational modes and again some rx some ry some rz gives us the cumulative value let's see here for the, our first mode of vibration ux we have 0.8014 that means 80 percentage of mass associated with first mode of vibration is participating in the participating in the deflection or participating in the vibration of our structure so ux we have 80.14 percentage ui we have 0.6 percentage so we can say that in our first mode of vibration our building translates in the x direction since ux value we have 80.14 percentage that means our building is stiffer in the y direction so in our first mode of vibration our building will translate in the x direction and if you see the value of rx ry and rz for this first mode also we have rx 0.28 percentage ry 20 percentage and rz 1.96 percentage so ry 20.85 percentage means there is some uh, rotational effect associated with our first mode of vibration however it is predominantly a translation in x direction similarly if we look at the second mode we see that 76.9 percentage is participating in translation in y direction only 1.25 percentage is participating in translation in x direction and rx again 20 percentage is participating in rotation about x direction so again this is predominantly a translation in y direction so our first two modes of vibration are translation in x direction and translation in y direction so this is the sign of a healthy structure or this is a sign of a regular structure because we do not have any torsional mode of vibration predominant torsional mode of vibration in our first two modes and if we look at our third mode of vibration we have only 1.36 percentage ux and 6.5 percentage ui but we have 76.63 percentage rz that means 76 percentage of mass is participating in 
rotation about the z direction so our third mode of vibration is torsional mode of vibration let's see these three results in animation also let's just click on done we have here deflected shape for mode one so if i click on start animation you can see that the structure or our building is translating along the x direction this red x direction now let's go to the second mode by clicking on this arrow here you see that in second mode our structure is tilting towards the y direction and there is translation along y direction in the second mode and finally the third mode there is a rotation about the z axis this is the torsional mode of vibration so these three were the animation of our deflected shape for the first three modes <coughs> sorry let's go to the table again after checking the predominant vibration mode for the first three modes another check that we have to perform is that the number of modes or the cumulative modal masses should be at least 90 percentage of the total seismic weight for the number of modes of vibration considered let's see here we have 12 mode and in the 12th mode the sum ux is 1 sum ui is 1 and sum rz is also 1 that means for all three directions ux ui and rz 100 percent is 1 means 100 percent is of the modal mass is being considered 100 percent is modal mass is acting in the vibration of our structure in our 12th mode if you see here our 90 percent is mass participation is reached in mode 4 for ux and mode 5 for ui so and our 90 percent is mass participation is being reached at mode 6 for rz so if we had considered only six modes of vibration also that would have been sufficient however if we consider more modes of vibration our results are more precise although the modeling time or the analysis time may be a little bit longer so the 90 percent is modal mass participation criteria is also satisfied and finally there are two more checks left to be performed if you look at our is clause 1893 part 1 2016 in table 6 of that clause i have already discussed about it also i am repeating this again in table 6 we have the definition of irregular buildings vertical irregularities and in that table 6 number 7 table 6 number 7 criteria what it says is that in buildings located in seismic zone 2 and 3 it shall be ensured that the first three modes together contribute at least 65 percent mass participation factor in each principal plan direction so since our building is located in zone 5 we will just ignore this clause and then it says continuous continuously or adjacent to that criteria what it says is that in buildings located in seismic zones 4 and 5 it shall be ensured that the first three modes together contribute at least 65 percent mass participation factor in each principal plan direction so let's see here in this mode number three the sum ux is 82.75 percentage and sum ui is 84.03 percentage so these both values are greater than 65 percent so that criteria is satisfied and also it says that the fundamental lateral natural periods of the building in the two principal plan directions are away from each other by at least 10 percent of the larger value so what it says is that for these first two modes these two natural periods that we have the difference between these two natural time periods or this 
uh, lower time period 0 0.585 should be at least 10 percent is lower than this first time period 0 0.639 this would be at least separated by a gap of 10 percent is so let's just calculate that i'll open my calculator here so what is 10 percent is of 0 0.585 that is 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.585 that is 0 0.0585 and let's add this 10 percentage to 0 0.585 again plus 0 0.585 we get 0 0.6435 sorry sorry not 10, 10, not 10 percent is of this smaller value, but 10 percent is of this larger value. So let me just do it again. 10 percent is of 0 0.639 is 0 0.0639. And this 10 percent is value we have to add to the let me read that clause again the fundamental lateral natural periods of the building in the two principal plant directions are away from each other by at least 10 percentage of the larger value so if i add this 0 0.0639 to 0 0.585 our time period in our structure should have been at least 0 0.6489 seconds but it is less than 0 0.6489 second that is only 0 0.639 second so that clause is not satisfied the difference between these two natural periods in the principal plant directions thus this larger natural time period should have been at least 10 percent is greater than this smaller time period 0 0.585 so we calculate 10 percent of this larger natural time period 0 0.639 which was 0 0.0639 and we added that 0 0.0639 to 0 0.585 we got our larger natural time period to be 0 0.6489 so our first mode time period should have been greater than this 0 0.6489 but it is smaller than this 0 0.639 so we may have to revise our structure because this criteria has not been fulfilled so let's just close this and let's just click on done so all our structure is symmetric almost symmetric only because of this staircase cover on the fourth floor then there is some uh, irregularity in our building otherwise our structure is mostly a symmetric structure in both plan and elevation so we may have to revise our structure based on that consideration so this brings us to the end of our model analysis lecture we talked about uh, how to define modal load cases and what are the checks to be performed for the modal information based on modal analysis this modal analysis forms the basis of our response spectrum analysis because what a response spectrum analysis does is it combines the results of all the modes of vibration that we obtain from modal analysis it performs modal superposition and then it combines those results based on certain combination rule so modal analysis we end there in our next video lecture or in our next lecture we will continue with our response spectrum analysis we will see how to define a response spectrum load case and a response spectrum function and we will also see about base shear scaling in our next lecture. I would like to end this lecture today. See you again soon. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you.